Hello and welcome to part two of our two-part series, which is how to paint different regiments of the Astra Militarum. Now in part one, we did some simple kit bashing, which was mainly just a few head swaps here and there. However, today we're gonna ramp up our conversion prowess by using things like masking tape and clump foliage. Ooh, I normally say foliage, so I've got that right today. So I'm proud of myself. So yeah, we're gonna be looking to do some tanned cloaks, some talon head wraps, and some bus drawing bear skins amongst other things. So if you want to take your Cadian plastics to the next level or just recreate some of your favourite regiments, stay tuned. The Tannic first and only are primarily light infantry, highly skilled in stealth and reconnaissance skills and easily recognised by their iconic cloaks. However, they have but one regiment as their homeworld Tanith was destroyed by the forces of chaos shortly after their initial founding. So for this kit bash, what I'm going to be doing here is using masking tape for the cloak and a ferry head from the Tempest Siren kit. What I'm going to do is get some masking tape, any mate will do, put a strip on a cutting mat or protected surface and draw a little cloak design. I'll slightly taper the design just so it looks better when it's on the mini. Then cut it out with a nice sharp knife and then place it onto the figure. Now I've not glued this at this point but you can always do that after if you're happy with the placement. And all I'm going to do here is just manipulate that masking tape and get it into the desired position. I'm using my knife as I can easily snip bits off if I need to, but any pointy tool will work. If your cloak is too long at the end as well, don't worry, just gently tear that bit off at the bottom and it gives it a nice natural effect. And then once sprayed, that masking tape will harden. Although the cloak's not swirling around like you expected to, we've gone for battle dress, which is sometimes the fashion that the Tanif like to wear it. Now I'm starting off with a grey undercoat here, I'm using Mechanica Standard Grey, any grey will do. And I'm going to do a dry brush of Rakar Flesh, this gives a nice pre-highlight before we apply any contrasts. So our first contrast we're going to do here is we're going to use Black Legion and I'm going to thin this down to two parts water to one part Black Legion. I'm going to coat this over most of those black details, so that's the cloth, the boots, the armour, the rucksack, etc. Once that's dry, I'm now going to add a second coat, but I'm just going to keep this to the fatigues and the beret. And once that's dry, I'm then going to get pure Black Legion straight from the pot. I'm going to add this to the armour, a little bit to the beret, and also to those boots. And from this one colour, you should get three different tones of black, just by watering it down to different consistencies. Now for any silver details, such as the details on the gun, and any like buttons here and there, I'm just going to use oily steel. The gold details, such as the cap badge, belt buckle, etc., I'm going to be using bronze or AK bronze. Now, moving on to painting the cloak, the first colour is going to be a base coat of Deathworld Forest. Then, I'm going to coat all over that using Plague Bearer Flesh. Now, for our Tanif skin, I'm going to start off with Rakar Flesh because I do have very pale skin. For any hair, such as this mighty moustache or the wooden stock, I'm going to be using Saigor Brown. And then we're going to coat over the flesh using Gulliman Flesh. I've thinned this down to two parts water to one part flesh. And I'll do this in two coats. And there we are. Our Tanif Trooper is now tabletop ready. However, stay tuned if you want to add some highlights and also some camo to that cloak. Using Deathworld Forest, what I'm going to do here is just tidy back up some of those raised areas on the cloak. And now we're going to move on to our camo. And the first colour I'm going to use is Minotaur Green. I'm just going to do some little splodges and dashes. Now I'm going to use Saigor Brown to do some more splodges and dashes and just to break up that shape a bit more. And to finish off those camo cloaks, what I'm going to do here is add a third camo design using Ogwin Camo and then use that Ogwin Camo as an edge highlight on the cloth. Again, use the edge of your brush where you can. Now to differentiate the black, what I'm going to start off first is get some storm moving fur. I'm just going to layer up that backpack and also just do some highlights on the webbing. I'll do a little bit on the beret and also some bits on the boots as well. And to make the armour look a little bit different, I'm just going to chip that up with some oily steel. With the armour chips up, what I'm now going to do is get some Rakar flesh 
and just re-layer up some of that skin. Again, in places it's gonna be a little bit stark, so just get that mix of gum and flesh and just coat over, just to add a little bit of depth here and there. And finally, I'm gonna get some Storm Fiend and do the iconic tattoos that's very reminiscent of the Tanif Troopers. Just a simple one here on the wrist, just a couple of lines and some dots if you're feeling brave enough. And there we are, our Tanith first and only trooper is now done and he looks magnificent. And what better than to add an adversary to the Tanith and do the blood pact. Blood for the blood gods. And skulls for someone. That guy. The blood pact is a highly organized chaos cult devoted to corn. Unlike many cultist warbands, the pact fought as a disciplined army, similar in training and organization to the Imperial Guard. They quickly became a dominant elite of the Chaos forces opposing the Sabbath World Crusade and caused the people of the Imperium no small amount of suffering and woe. So for most of this kit, we're just using the Cadian set, except we're just gonna do a snarly face mask using the skull pack. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the back of the skull away, being super careful not to ruin the skull face, like I did here. Cut away at the back or file using a modeling file and then slice the top of the skull away like I've just done here. Try and get as close to the brow. There's a little bit of testing here and there, so dry fit just to make sure it's, I'm happy with it. If not, slice a bit more away and just keep trying that. Then I'm slicing the face of the actual guardsman away. I know, this is terrifying to slice someone's face and nose off. And again, it's just lots of dry fitting to make sure it fits in place. And then just glue it on. Now initially we used one without a jaw, so we decided to change that and go with one with a jaw. It just looked better and it just fits in. Alternatively, you could just use the blooded traitor guard or paint the Cadian face as a grotesque mask. Do whatever works for you. This is just using the Cadian set as requested by the community. This model has also been undercoated using a great undercoat. Mechanica standard great, any gray will do. Now again, as always, I like to dry brush over with Rakar flesh. It just helps bring out some extra highlights when we start coating it over with contrasts. And the first contrast we're gonna be using here is Flesh Terra's Red, and that's for the red cloth. Again, you don't have to be super neat at this point because we'll be painting over that armor later on. And the reason why you don't need to be super neat is I'm gonna get some Wild Rider Red and gently dry brush that over the cloth. And this just adds an extra level of highlight if you need it. For our armor and silver details, we're gonna be using AK Oily Steel. For any black details, we're gonna get some Black Legion and apply that straight from the pot. Any gold elements, we're using AK Bronze. I know it's bronze, not gold, but it looks cool. And we're going to coat those details in Nord Oil. So that's black, leather, and silver details. Now our blood pack model is ready for the tabletop. However, if you want to add a little bit more punch to that red, and also that armor, stay tuned. Now I'm going to get some more Wild Rider Red here and do some highlighting on the cloth. I know we've already dry brushed, but this adds a little bit of extra definition. And if you stab it along the edges of the cloth, it makes it look a little bit torn and battered. For any leather pouches and black details, I'm going to highlight that with Storm Vermin Fur. Of that gold skull face, I'm going to get some oily steel and just highlight some of those edges. Again, it's just going to stop it from being too gold. I'll just knock it back a bit. With our sinister and super organized Chaos Troopers now done, we're going to move on to kit bashing and painting up a Talon Desert Raider. The Talon have been forced to make use of mechanized armor and APCs in order to safely move their infantry across the barren wasteland of their homeworld. As a result, the Talon Desert Raiders are also well known in their use of armored vehicles and warfare, and their tank crews are some of the most renowned in the Imperium. Now for this kit bashing, we're going to be using masking tape for the headscarf, 
and I'm building the Cadian as is. The only thing I'm doing here is just getting rid of that brim off the helmet and also the eagle. Got some masking tape to a nice thin strip around about four to five millimeters and then begin wrapping that around the helm. I found through a bit of trial and error, just twisting it as you go really helps to add to that head wrap effect. In some places you might need to use a knife just to squeeze into some of those gaps and I find tearing the end gives it a more rough and ready look. As with the Tanif cloak as well, you can always add some super glue at the end just for some extra stability. But I found once it's sprayed, it pretty much stays where it is. For this scheme, we began with a desert or beige undercoat. I've used Zandra dust here. And all I'm gonna do now is dry brush over all of that to give myself a pre-highlight. And I'm using Screaming Skull here. Then without being super neat, I'm just gonna coat over the whole model using Seraphim Sepia. This is mainly for the cloth, but again, it just adds a bit of extra definition for some of those other colors. The trousers, and we might as well do the camera at this point as well, we're using wild flesh. The camera is quite straightforward, it's quite large blodges. For the leather and the rucksack, I'm going to be using Mournfang Brown. For the off-white of the scarf, I'm going to be using AK Rock Grey. For all the black details, which is like the boots as well as the armour, I'm going to be using Black Legion straight from the pot. For our silver details, so things on the las gun, any little buttons here and there, I'm going to be using AK Oily Steel. And for those gold details or bronze details, if you like, I'll be using AK Bronze. To pick out a skin, I'm going to be using Blood Reaver Flesh. Probably do a couple of coats here. And then we're literally going to shade the entire model in Targor Raid Shade. It's a really nice shade, somewhere between, so kind of a reddy, sort of brown, but it sits between Norn Oil and Agro Shade. Also, in doing all this all over shade, just be mindful when it pulls, dry off a brush, and then just soak up any excess if you find any. And now with that shade dry, it's now ready for the tabletop. So you can play games, get it based however you want to base it, but Stick around if you want to see what highlights we do to it. So the first colour we're going to get here is Wild Flesh. We're just going to tie up those green trousers and just add a little bit more punch to that camo pattern. I'm not going all the edges to the camo pattern, it's just, just add a bit more punch in the centre. I'm going to get some AK Medium Olive Green. I'm going to add a highlight to the trousers and also for a teeny tiny bit more punch to that camo, just drop a little bit in the centre there. Then I'm going to tie it up using Mournfang Brown and this is for all those leather details I did. Then we're going to highlight the tunic using Screaming Skull. For the headdress, we're going to be using Rock Grey again. Again, it's just tidying up those raised areas. And then we're just going to chip the armour using some AK Oily Steel again. Then we're going to highlight the skin or layer it back up using some Blood Reaver Flesh. If you want it to go a bit lighter, let's get some of that Screaming Skull and mix that in as well for a second or third highlight. With our Talon Desert Raider done, we're now going to move on to the mighty Praetorian Guard. Oh yeah. Praetoria is a heavily populated hive world. The Imperial Guard regiments raised on Praetoria are renowned for their iron discipline and bravery, even in the face of the most overwhelming odds. Through fearsome training and draconian punishments for the most minor infringements, produces troops that are ferocious on the attack as they are determined in defense. This is quite a straightforward kit bash. All I've done here, like the Ventrally Noble, is just used a pistol ear head, but without the plume. If you do have ones with plumes, snip the plume off, get rid. Now for the red cloth, we're gonna be using Mephiston Red. In some places, you might wanna do a second coat for better coverage. For the dark blue trousers, we're gonna be using Cantor Blue. Inspired by the 40k roleplay game art, I'm going to be using Rakar Flesh here for the armour. Again, you might just want to add a couple of layers of this. Then for the collars and cuffs, I'm going to use some Avalon Sunset. All our black details are going to get picked out of Black Legion.
and his silver details, I'll be picking those out with AK Oily Steel. For the gold or bronze details, I'm using AK Bronze. And I'm gonna get some Norn Oil and apply that all over. And now what we're gonna do, is get some Gulliman Flesh and apply that all over the skin. And I thin this down with two parts water to one part Gulliman Flesh. With all those colors blocked in, our model is pretty much ready for the tabletop, so get it based in the color that matches your army. And if you wanna hang around and see how we highlight it, stay tuned. So first up, we're gonna tidy up the tunic using some Mephiston Red. Again, just adding a bit more punch to that tunic. Then we'll do some highlights of Wild Rider Red. And just work your way around the edges, use the edges of brush where possible. For the trousers, we're going to tidy those up with Cantor Blue, and then highlight them up with a Laytop Blue. For the collars and cuffs, they're just getting the tied up of Avalanche Sunset, so nothing too technical here. Then we're going to pick out all the leather details or any black details using some Storm Vermin fur. And in some places, you might want to highlight that skin back up and also add a bit more punch to that armour, and for this, we'll be using Rakar Flesh. And there's an edge highlight on the actual armor. We're gonna get AK Rock Gray. I'll just do some edge highlights and a couple of little scuffs and a bit of battle damage. And there we are, super straightforward way of doing Praetorian Guard. So the last one now is gonna be a Vostroid. A little bit different, might seem a bit funky at first, but stay tuned, we're gonna be using some clump foliage. During the Horus Heresy, Vostroy refused to provide regiments to the Emperor, preferring instead to reserve the population in the Manufactoria blanket in the world. After the Heresy, the Vostroyans, out of guilt, agreed to supply every family's firstborn son to service with the Imperial Guard, earning them the name the Vostroyan Firstborn. Now for this kit bash, what I'm going to do here is use the standard Cadian build. The only difference here is we're going to be adding some clump foliage to the headdress to make a bear skin. Now the first thing we're going to do is cut away that Imperial Eagle and the side panels and the little back panel. Just use a sharp knife and be careful. You can keep them on and just get in the way a bit when you're adding the foliage. Then apply some super glue to the helmet and then start populating it with clump foliage. Now I won't lie, it's going to look a tad funky and comical at first. Stay with it, build up some height and some depth. And then when it's dry, get some scissors and channel your inner Jeff and do a little bit of barbering. In some places you might cut a bit too fine and need to add some more foliage, but that's fine. Your aim is to make a bare skin, so don't try and be too exact. From an undercoat Mechanica standard gray, we're now gonna start applying some AK Vermilion to the red cloth. You might wanna do a couple of coats of this. It's quite a vibrant red. After you've picked out the red cloth, if you did get any on the grey trousers, just get some Mechanica Standard Grey in a pot and just tidy back up. For any bronze details, such as the armour and also belt buckles, etc., we're going to apply AK Bronze. All our black details are going to get picked out of Black Legion. And for the wooden gun casing, what we're going to do here is use Catacham Flesh for that. Also, when using Catacham Flesh, just get yourself an old brush and just dry brush that over the bare skin. Then it's a matter of picking out some silver details using oily steel. With all those details picked out, what we're now going to do is coat over everything with Norn Oil. Again, just be mindful for it pooling in the wrong places. And then we're going to pick out the skin using Cadian Flesh Tone. And then coat over that with some Gulliman Flesh. I'll thin this down with two parts water to one part flesh. With all those colours blocked in, our Vostroin Firstborn is now ready for the tabletop. So base it in a colour that matches your collections. Now the first thing I'm going to do with our highlighting is get some of that Vermilion from AK and just tie up the tunic. Then we're just going to do some subtle highlights here and there using some Wilder Rider Red, just for a bit more punch. 
Then we're going to tidy back up those trousers with Mechanica Standard Green. Because we've got that shade over it, it saves us doing it in a big highlight, really. So it's just tidying it up, giving us a second coat of grey. Then we're going to use some Storm Vermin Fur to pick out any black details. So that's things like the boots, the rucksack, belt, webbing, etc. Get some AK Bronze and tidy up all those armour details. Highlight any brown, such as the bear skin, as well as the actual gun casing with some Gorthor brown. And tidy back up that skin using Cadian Flesh Tone. Then for any silver details and also the bronze, we're just going to highlight those back up with a little bit of AK or E Steel. There we are, our Vostroin Firstborn is now done. Now, if you didn't get a chance to check out part one where we did five other regiments, a little bit more simple kit bashes, check that video out up here. As always, thank you very much for watching. Check out our Patreon if you're interested in joining that because you get a lot of early access as well as many other benefits. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Check out the details of the affiliate links. But until then, till we meet again, I love you all. Farewell. Kadia stands, sort of, in bits floating around the galaxy it's, it's in bits the, the guys aren't in bits but the planet's in bits at least that's what i'm told they lose by the way <laughs> <laughs>